Hello fellow fishermen. It is rapidly getting to that time uh, to start slaying stuff on the water. The two primary ways this year I'm going for are uh, jerkbait and swimbait uh, primarily. I will be throwing some frogs. I always throw frogs during the summer. But I'm going to talk today a little bit more um, jerkbaits. So I have a video on my YouTube about jerkbaits in particular, um, and it's fairly informative, so uh, you would be more than welcome to uh, see that. This is specifically talking about a little bit newer attitude that I have, and that is that um, I'm really starting to like the finesse jerkbaits uh, just as much as the full scale but I've discovered things about myself and jerkbaits that lend themselves to uh, using them much different than most people will. That being said, the primary reason that I'm doing this video is that um, the way that I'm, I'm using them has changed significantly. Yes, I do still do the standard ways, but there's also times where I'll do the color spectrum the opposite way that most people do. You know, there's people that um, will do flashier colors when it's clean water as opposed to muddy water when they do more uh, stealthy approach. When it comes to jerk baits, I'll do flash and, and all that, but I do everything 99% of the time in a completely natural color pattern. <sighs> Excuse me, I just woke up like 10 minutes ago. Um, I don't like in any lure I use to really stray from the natural colors too much. Yes, there are greens and yellows and such in bait fish. So I will throw some chartreuse and some yellow in there every now and then. And the only exception to my statement with color is this one from Bass Pro Shops that I have. Which has the red face and the chartreuse top and bottom, and then it's more of a traditional silvery hued side. Now, the reason I like this particular one is because the humpback has a really nice wobble to it. It's kind of round all the way around, but it's a slim profile all the way, and it has a really, really minuscule lip. I mean, the lip is really tiny. It still goes down about two feet. Um, but this has got me my single largest uh, jerkbait fish to date. And uh, it was on um, a pond. Well, and I've gotten two big ones. Um, the biggest, the two of those was on ASU Research Park, uh, the middle pond, the, the longest of the ponds, the one that's surrounded by buildings. Um, and the funny thing is it was right off the waterfall, right off of uh, River Parkway. So... It was uh, a couple of years ago, dead of fall, uh, fairly cold, really crisp morning, and I threw it and I twitched it, let it sit for like a minute. Uh, when it's really cold out, I do them very, very, very slow, slower than most people. I give it another twitch, let it sit, and about 20 seconds and letting it sit, it was hammered. And I literally, it was only two twitches inside of like almost three minutes. So that's the only one that I'll... I'll use, uh, regardless of, of clear or muddy or what condition the water is, this color pattern for some reason will just pull some vicious strikes. Uh, I don't stray from the natural very much at all. This is a uh, Berkeley cutter. Um, I recently started getting into the Berkeleys a little bit because they have a really kind of nice shape to them and they still, for the most part, carry on that minnowy. Uh, type of look, bait fishy look. They got really nice pattern. Uh, it can be any kind of shad or middle imitation. And they had, happen to have like more of this uh, ace of spades type almost uh, lip tone. So these go down about four to six foot max, I believe. Depends on what size line you use. But they have kind of a uh, a wide wobble to them. It doesn't have a lot of, of twitch uh, to it. It has more of a roll. And uh, when they're more active, it works pretty good. 
It's one of those ones that's subtle enough that when they're not biting anything else either, like the opposite of that, sometimes it'll elicit a pretty decent strike. Uh, the fish that I've gotten on this one have never struck it hard. I've got to say that. This Berkeley Cutter is the only uh, jerkbait I've ever had where it's been a fairly uh, fairly tepid hit. It's still been definitive, just not very hard. The segment that I uh, was saying that I'm really starting to get into is the uh, more of the finesse and ultralight. Now to me, when I was... Uh, about 13, 14, when my dad started me on, on uh, lure fishing for bass. Uh, Ropla and Rebel were, were where I was at, period. And to this day, I really love their stuff, and they're very innovative. <laughs> so, I have this uh, Finesse x wrap, which is in kind of a... It's kind of hard to see the color. Uh, it's got kind of a brown-blue mixed together and then it goes into the red it's got a very big lip for its size and it's also got the tassily uh, sparkly shit underwear hook which I typically don't go for but for some reason that added flash in the water it pulls the fish in and it does uh, but this is an ultra light this is a two and a quarter inch I believe I have like five or six of these in different colors it has a very erratic motion, and if you throw into uh, a pool of bait fish and they're they're getting hit, and you twitch this along the line of them, or right in the middle of them, either way, it gets hit. And I do it only on ultra ultralight gear because I can get that uh, that snap and bend in the rod that gives that four to six inch pull, and it makes it flutter really really good. Um, really great river jerk baits man they are fucking good for rivers and then I have the micros this is a rebel uh, they do not make this particular one anymore it's got that kind of a funky sparkle trout pattern to it it doesn't matter what time of the year it is it doesn't matter what the water clarity is if I throw this around rocks or if I throw it anywhere along the side in a, any river I've been to any river I've been to, it's gotten clobbered. I don't have hooks on it right now because I used them for another one of my ultralights. Um, it will be very soon because I'm going to go to Black River at some point with my friend Jim. Uh, well, I'm hoping to anyway. And this one, again, has uh, quite a lip to it. But this one, un unlike the others, it's got kind of a funky uh, squareness to it. It's, it's interesting, to say the least. Uh, it gets hit though. Man, does it get clobbered. And then, depending on the depth, uh, the two primary brands that I use are Lucky Craft, the Pointer Series. Uh, they have a really kick ass kind of a. I have like almost no energy left. I'm trying to swim, but I really can't type. Uh, injured motion. They have kind of a straightforward lip to them. Uh, it lends itself to be more of a loose wobble. It's not uh, it's not super erratic. That's the four to four to six foot, I believe. And this is the uh, Vision 110 regular, uh, the same depth range. I have it in Tennessee Shiner. I like the color pattern. It's got a little bit of green in it. And then, of course, I've got the uh, Deep Runners, this is a straight uh, shiner type presentation color. Uh, this one goes around 10 foot. If I put it on a 6 pound line, I can get it to about 14 foot. Um, I have a deep running pointer as well, but I, I'm getting in the process of getting more uh, of these jerk baits. I've, I've had some, lost some. Uh, the other ones that I really like, I'm not all that impressed with the weight transfer system, but their action, because of their their thick bill, it's not the widest in the world, it's really thick though, are the Strike Kings that Kevin Van Dam uses. This is a Sexy Shad color. Sexy Shad works pretty damn good in most water conditions. For some reason, that black dot with the yellow stripe just pulls them in. This is the uh, opaque 
It's got kind of see-through. This is the more uh, glittered one. It's got a little bit more blue on the top. And then, of course, the very translucent with the heavy blue and the dark purple to it. It's got kind of a transference to it. Uh, this is a deeper one. This one goes down to about 12 foot. Uh, it really gets super hammered. For some reason, as light as this color is, it gets really, really super hammered. I, it amazes me. And they're like, I think average Bass Pro, like six, seven bucks, maybe. The Vision 110s obviously are more expensive. The Lucky Crafts are more expensive. You know, I've got a, a smattering of the bigger square bills from Strike King, Lucky Craft, and Mega Bass. Uh, that grenade is phenomenal. And one of the brands that um, I'm really starting to get into because of their finesse style. This is a larger finesse style, but they exclusively use the circuit board uh, lips, the circuit board material. Savage Gears Finesse Series. Ladies and gentlemen, if you throw a jerk bait, you've got to try their finesse series. They just they have this motion to them, this big hump in the back. Uh, it's got kind of that classic egg oval to it. It has this just kick-ass roll to it. I, I can't really explain it in words. And I, before I throw them, I, I'll throw them right next to me and I'll pop them a couple times to see kind of how they roll. And man, the Savage Gears, this one's called a uh, Prey 95SS. So, they have a different series as well. Savage Gears Finesse series, they have some that go in the 65 to 77 size range. Uh, 90, 95, 100, 110, 120. Uh, there's some of their series that go all the way up to like 185s that are the Magnums. Uh, the Vision here, this one, they have, this is the Vision 110X. It's the X1, the excuse me, plus one, which is the deep dive. Then there's a plus one X, which is the Magnum. Uh, Magnum series I'm going to get as well because I I like big baits for big bass and it's worked well for me. So uh, I'll be going there as well. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have a chance to go to Bass Pro or or get uh, XPS series online. You've got to pick up one of these things. For some reason, I don't know what it is about this color pattern. Maybe it's just because it looks like it's bleeding and it's got some of the elements of all the colors that they like. But for a $3 lure, or sometimes on sale for like a buck fifty, and the rattles in it are more than enough. And it's constructed fairly robustly. It's not a cheap, it's, I mean, it's a cheap bait, but it doesn't flex when you push on it. So it's not a dirt cheap bait. It gets hammered hammered bad so at least have one and if you're not getting anything on any other jerk bait pull it out because I have thrown this on a medium light and just gotten clobbered and I've gotten you know pound and a half to four pound bass on this thing all day long this is a numbers jerk bait this thing will pull them in from everywhere if you're doing swim baits and you get nothing put one on it's cheap as shit. I paid $2 for this thing, and it's gotten me so many bass you can't even understand. I always will have this in my box. It's an ugly son of a bitch, but does it work? Man, does it fucking work. And if you're really looking at saving some money for buying a lot of jerkbaits, look into the Savage Gear Finesse series. Uh, for the expense, you can have five or six of them and uh, be, you know, depending on where you go, especially eBay and Amazon, you could be well under uh, 50 bucks and have some good jerk baits. They're really, really good.